In terms of size, only Antarctica is larger, but an ice-covered continent is not typically thought of as a desert. Most people think of a desert when they picture a place with intense heat, no rain, and lots of sand. The Sahara encompasses an area roughly the same size as Brazil or half of Russia. Have you heard that oil and petrol reserves have been found there? Sand dunes in the Sahara can reach heights of 160 to 180 meters, which is more than 70 stories in a skyscraper. What though lies beyond the dry sand? sandy terrain. Suppose that not so long ago, relatively recently, these huge expanses were teeming with life until something went wrong. Where did the Sahara sands lead? In this video, we'll be discussing the new discovery revealed under the Sahara sands. With a length of 4,800 kilometers to the west to east and a width of 800 to 1,200 kilometers from north to south, the desert is enormous. It covers a greater land area than the entire country of Brazil and accounts for 30% of Africa. Is is all this space really simply sand? Despite popular belief, the Sahara is only 20% covered in sand. The terrain there is typical, therefore you can expect to see familiar features like sand dunes. The Sahara is primarily composed of rocks and cliffs, with the exception of a thin layer of sand on its surface, which averages around 150 meters in thickness. There are isolated ridges up to 300 meters. Amazing truths are waiting to be revealed to you in the sand, pebbles, and stones. You should not underestimate the desert's mystery mysteriousness and fascination. Scientists have speculated for a long time that the Sahara was not always a lifeless desert. It was once a lovely, blossoming paradise, but until recently, this was merely a theory due to a lack of credible evidence. Hidden from plain sight, scientists discovered an unexpected discovery. Scientists have discovered a massive reservoir beneath the desert sands, and it is not the remnant of one of the old seas. It is discovered to be the remnant of a paleo lake that existed about 250,000 years ago, when the Nile flooded a shallow channel in the region of modern-day Wadetoshka Bay on Lake Nasser. At its largest, the lake encompassed over 108,000 square kilometers of the eastern Sahara. The ancient lake is twice as large as Lake Michigan and four times as large as Lake Erie. Simultaneously, a smaller lake of roughly 48,000 square meters emerged. Geologist Ted Maxwell of the National Air and Space Museum in the United States and his colleagues initially uncovered evidence of both lakes in 2010. Geologists were able to deduce the contours of a dried-up mega lake by analyzing data from a radar topography mission aboard the space shuttle. They use photos of waterborne and windborne sediments, in addition to staple rocks visible using radar under the desert sands. Due in part to the severe dryness of the desert, accurate information about the ancient secret buried in the Saharan sands could be uncovered. The radars were able to detect all of the finer details of the subsurface because of the dry air and consistent geological structure. About 4,000 kilometers west of the Nile River, at an elevation of roughly 250 meters above sea level, scientists discovered fossil fish bones in the sediments, making the lake's highest shoreline. Researchers established that the Nile previously filled the entire Kasiba, Tusca depression in Egypt, forming a vast lake by emerging the data into a single model. It is believed that a lake once existed near the ancient Egyptian cities of Salima and Tafui. This lake has been around for thousands of years, allowing for the evolution and spread of several species of plants and animals. Its sudden appearance, though, ensured its eventual demise. This body of water was drying up and evaporating quicker than it could be refilled. The water evaporated and was buried by sand over time, but life persevered still. Scientific research has shown that the Sahara was once home to thriving ecosystems and lush flora at least 5,000 years ago. In 2015, a new study's findings caused a stir in the scientific community thanks to a publication in the Nature Communications Journal. Using the Japanese ALOS Advanced Land Observing Satellite's Phased Array Type 1 Band Synthetic Aperture Radar for Radar Observation Science, scientists have uncovered the riverbed of a massive river with a complex system of tributaries. West Africa may have been traversed by the humongous Paleocene Tom and Rosset River as late as 5,000 years ago. According to legend, 
it began in the southern Atlas and Agaha Mountains of present-day Algeria. Researchers assume that the Tom and Rosset River Basin was rich in wildlife and flora in the distant past. In just over 2,000 years, it went completely dry. The river, if it still existed today, would be the 12th longest in the world. According to scientific conjecture, the river was ephemeral and may have appeared and disappeared over the course of the last 245,000 years. The time frame matches when the prehistoric lake was there. Any way you slice it, the river was a vital water supply that transformed a barren part of Africa to a verdant paradise. Today, there are still signs of the once mighty river. These well-known Saharan oases receive their water supply from underground reservoirs and currents. If you dive even further into the ravages of time, you'll find that the history of the Sahara is far more fascinating and full of unexpected twists and turns. Back in the prehistoric era, when everything was billions of years older, all of it was completely different. Basilosaurus, the predecessors of modern whales, thrived in the seas of the Sahara Desert during the Mesozoic Epoch and populated the region in large numbers. During the investigations in Egypt's Wadi al-Hitan, enormous fossilized remnants of these creatures were found. After thousands of years, the skeletons of these creatures persisted in their submerged state at the bottom of the ocean until the water level rose enough for the lagoon to dissolve and give way to the ancestors of the Mediterranean and Black Seas. When the ocean floor began to rise, it eventually became a landmass. As a result of the large number of whale fossils that have been discovered in the Sahara Desert, it is frequently referred to as the Valley of the Whales. Genuinely think it or not, you can find fossilized remains of one of the biggest dinosaurs, the herbivorous sauropod, buried under the dunes in various locations across the Sahara. This was a startling discovery that sparked the curiosity of scientists. You can also locate remains of old sea inhabitants buried beneath the sands. However, even that finding was eclipsed by uncovering the bone fragments of a previously unseen type of ancient beast. This discovery was a game-changer. Archaeologists in Egypt discovered an exciting discovery in 2016 that was quite remarkable. Egyptologists and paleontologists from the United States States, led by Dr. Hessian Solom of Mansour University, unearthed the petrified remains of a monster referred to as Mansarosaurus. Their finding caused quite a stir in the academic community when it was published. In 2018, the relics were at long last assigned to a new species and genus of an extinct prehistoric animal. The finding of paleontology has now come to see it as a holy grail. However, despite the Sahara species' incredible history, the most fascinating aspect is how humans have managed to survive in these regions. After the end of the last ice age, the Sahara Desert underwent a dramatic change, with estimates putting the date between 11,000 and 5,000 years ago. Increased precipitation transformed dry caverns into lakes, and lush flora sprouted atop the sand dunes. The once vibrant utopia no longer exists, but perhaps it could come back. In a nutshell, the answer is yes. According to Kathleen Johnson, an associate professor of Earth Systems just at the University of California, Irvine, the Green Sahara was brought on by Earth's continually shifting orbital rotation around its axis, a sequence that repeats itself once every 23,000 years. The Sahara is the world's largest hot desert, but when it begins to green up again is anyone's guess, due to the wild card that is human-caused greenhouse gas emissions, which have led to runaway climate change. The reversal to green in the Sahara was caused by a shift in the Earth's axis of rotation. According to prior reports, the tilt has decreased from its pre-8,000-year high of 24.1 degrees to its present low of 23.5 degrees. The angle of inclination was crucial. According to a 2018 study published in Science, the Sahara and its southern neighbor, the semi-arid Sahel, may see an increase in rainfall if enormous solar and wind farms were erected there. Live science previously documented that solar and wind farms can raise local temperatures and humidity. According to the authors of that study, a positive feedback loop could be established if an uptick in precipitation led to an uptick in plant growth. However, testing this massive operation in the Sahara Desert has yet to receive funding, so it may be another 12,000 years before we find out if the Sahara will once again be verdant. That's all for today's video. Leave your thoughts on these discoveries. Also, take a minute out and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned. See you soon.